Hello. Mini DV and its larger size uh, DV tapes could be used not only for standard definition, but also high definition. And here's a, a Sony high definition uh, player, which will play 1080i uh, high definition video tapes from that format. And I have equipment downstairs that can even do 1080p uh, in the small and large size. But did you know that there was a 720p variant made exclusively by JVC. And the trouble is that the Sony equipment won't play it or won't play it properly uh, because it's a JVC only weirdo format. And very occasionally I've had the odd tape in for that format and been unable to play it. I've never even seen a camcorder that could record in that uh, 720p format. Special it's really delivery. obscure. Oh, I say. And all it's in this. So that looks well packaged. Well, as I said, I've never even seen a camcorder for it, and I don't even know if they did uh, mains Special video delivery. recorders. Oh, I say. So maybe they did video recorders for the 720p format as well. Let's have a rummage through these. Okay, let's start with the contents of this box. Now that's what you call a camcorder. It sort of feels a bit reminiscent of my uh, lovely big uh, Sony digital beta cam camcorder, but it's a lot smaller and it's high definition. But handily enough, it will take some of the same accessories, including battery. So uh, we should be able to power it up. Let's start by getting the lens fitted because I don't like the dust getting in there. I do not know how to install this lens. Right, I, have, I think I have the uh, lens installed. I expected the uh, locking ring to go on with a bit more of a positive click. It just sort of does up. Okay, then that will need connecting there. It says lens. We don't presently have a microphone. We'll borrow the one off the Sony in a moment. But we do have battery with some charge in it, I think. Good. master on off switch here there's no eye cap on the um, viewfinder but it's all lit up press eject right I'll actually give it a new tape I won't use that one how do we close it push here so that's all looking very promising uh, but we'll also have a look at this um, I understand that this does not work Right, so that's the kind of video recorder you would use with this, and this takes small and large tapes, uh, HDV and, and DV cam, uh, but it also, I believe, will support the same format as this writes out. But I've been told that there's an internal flexi cable in here that has been split, so that's going to take a lot of work to repair, if possible at all. So uh, let's start then with the... Uh, camcorder. Okay, ideally I would use um, HDV tapes for this. Uh, I, what's the difference between an HDV tape and a regular mini DV tape? I think the answer probably is they're sort of tuned for very low dropout because uh, dropouts are more obvious on HDV than they are standard definition. Uh, can we go eject with the machine switched off? Yes. Right, and switch it on. So far, so good. I think what we'll do is connect it to the monitor. It's only still standard definition TV and see what we can get on the menus on the TV. So have good old fashioned composite video outputs. That seems to be working. We haven't got any sound because I haven't got a microphone hooked up at the moment and we're in HDV HD25P it says so let's just start making any old random recording for a second and see what we get where's the record button there's one on the side here wreck let's hit it I think we are actually rolling so we're definitely uh, making a recording let's uh, stop and review that switch to VTR mode it says to rewind that's a bit unhelpful instead of saying you have to do this why doesn't it give the option to do so
one thing I found that's broken, there should be a little catch here so that when that's closed, it stays closed until you push it. But somebody's obviously just brute forced it open and snapped the clip off. Okay, we do get the benefit of this display as well. And here we have the cam VTR button. That's what I was uh, clearly failing to find earlier. Right, now I can rewind the tape. And yes, we are playing back our recording. And we're getting what appears to be good playback. It's wobbling about properly. We're not getting any dropped frames that I can see. So it looks okay. One thing, of course, we want to see the head hours. Okay, so we press the menu button. Maybe we need to get out of VTR mode for this. Video format, yes, we'd like to see that. DV 25p, DV 50i, so that'd be standard definition. HDV uh, 25p. So we'll have to experiment with these resolutions because I think 25p is, is that 1080? And that one 720? I'm not sure. After a lot of poking about in the menus, I think I've found the drum hours 227. If that is the drum hours and not multiplied by 10, then that's very low indeed. Whilst uh, experimenting with this to take some shots, I've discovered we have a fault. Look, I'm zoomed all the way out there to a tree through the window. Excuse me, a fuzzy old picture. But you can see that I'm focused on that tree. And now look what happens if I zoom it out. It should stay beautifully sharp. But actually the focus is moving. And at one point it focuses even on the window itself. And it's focusing now on close things in my studio. The focus should not shift as we alter the zoom. But it clearly is. Uh, this is a fault. Let me show you why. What you should do is adjust the uh, there's, a, there's a special ring here and you adjust it to set the uh, rear the back focus so you focus okay let me tell you something all right <clears throat> here's the uh, lens assembly and let me tell you I didn't know this until very recently okay even though I've got another broadcast camera I'd never sussed this out what you do is typically you'll zoom forward and set the focus and then you should zoom back and the focus should remain the same and if it's not you need to adjust a ring on the back of the lens uh, which is the back focus and you adjust that ring get it clear on the back and then go to the front and make sure it's always clear both ends and then you can lock this ring off and you shouldn't really need to touch it again but it's all over the place here uh, there's also it clicks it's, it's held uh, onto the macro but let's not worry about the macro for a minute the, the problem we've got is this ring is slopping about there's supposed to be uh, a locking uh, thumb thumb wheel little black metal or plastic similar to this but smaller and black that goes through this thread here it's a five millimeter thread and locks it onto the um, collar underneath and in a minute we'll have a look at that we'll see that you can see the sort of score marks on the collar underneath where that locking screw used to uh, bear down onto the, the metal underneath and lock this in the correct place and in fact if you do turn this to where those marks are uh, the lens is correctly set up so you say well no problem it's just a missing five millimeter screw I mean I can just use a five millimeter screw but no, you can't, because if you do put 5mm screw in here, you'll rapidly find out that this is split. You can see there, I'm pulling it apart. So what's happened is somebody's creamed that up too tight and split this adjuster altogether. Uh, I can't take it off to repair it or anything like that. I mean, it would mean a major strip down of the lens. So I've got to fix it in situ. Uh, so what I'm going to do first is we'll have a look at the damage 
under a microscope and see if we can work out a way to uh, repair that. Okay, so we're looking down here at this uh, damaged part on the microscope and we can see right under this area is where the original um, adjuster was bearing down onto the surface underneath. So you can see it was somewhere between there and there are the places it used to be. So clearly the original screw is not pointed, it's flat uh, based. And our problem being that this is completely split apart. Um, is this plastic or metal? I actually can't tell. Uh, if it's plastic, it's way too feeble for the job it's being asked to do. So, um, so I guess the idea is because there aren't any uh, sort of, there's nothing to grip here. The idea is that you undo the adjuster like this. You undo the adjuster and then use the adjuster to move the ring around and then do it up. Uh, and then lock it into place. Now what am I going to do? I can't worry too much at the moment about getting a replacement locking screw because our biggest problem is that the thing is split. Uh, so could I glue it? You know there are hazards to that. What kind of glue would be appropriate? If I get glue down here and it starts going all over the things that it shouldn't be then I'm going to be in real trouble. So what kind of glue should I use? Bear in mind I want to retain this thread. The two things that come to mind are, well, super glue or epoxy resin. Now, super glue is very good at working in very small spaces such as this. So from that point of view, it might be really good. But super glue is very poor at taking force. A uh, pulling force will almost certainly overcome its strength. If I was to put um, epoxy resin on here, well, if it went into the groove, into the threads, I'd be in trouble, right? Because once I've got epoxy resin into those threads, I'll never, ever be able to fit a screw in there. So I'd have to be super careful. And also with epoxy resin, I could get it onto the adjacent components here. I wouldn't want it here. I wouldn't want it going down in here. That would be bad news. So, you know, ideally I'd want glue on that. Can you see down the bottom there? I don't know if you can quite see it. There's the, the, the crack goes all the way down through here, all the way down to underneath here. I don't think you can quite see it. I think we can just about see it now. The, the crack goes through to the component underneath. You see down there? So... Um, Ideally, I'd like to glue that, but I don't think there's any chance of doing that. And what is this thing made of? It could be metal. Which metal? Aluminium, maybe? Sounds like aluminium. If I used an extremely small amount of super glue, what I think I'd have to do is hold this open and insert some super glue in there at the bottom. So hold it open by inserting something in here. It almost feels like I so want to keep that clear that I perhaps should gum it up with blue tack while I'm doing the gluing. I don't know. No, I might not be able to get out quick enough because once the super glue's in there, you don't get long to set it. Right, so I think I'm going to have to do that. I'm going to have to super glue initially, even though it's not strong enough, because super glue will give me the location accuracy I need and then apply a tiny bit of epoxy resin to the top very very carefully and then worry about how to fit a five millimeter bolt of some sort in there okay i've balanced a screwdriver in there to hold the gap open for a moment now i have some super glue which i'm going to pick up with the uh, dentist pick and see if we can get it into that split Okay, that seems to have worked. So now take the screwdriver out slowly. Okay, that seems to be working. And you might see that some of the 
super glue has actually made it through to the bottom where the bottom of the crack is so I'm really reasonably hopeful that that will stick what I want to do I think is compress this right we'll leave that for a while and see how we get on and then maybe put some um, epoxy resin on the top so I've decided to um, use an M5 bolt just very very gently on the top here just to start the threads and stop any glue from running down into the threads right and now hopefully what will happen is the glue it may stick onto those threads a little bit of that bolt but what I'll do is before the glue gets too hard I'll take that out but before the after the glue is runny but before it gets too hard to break off all right there it goes right we'll leave that glue for a few minutes and then I'll take the uh, bolt out and hopefully the threads will be clear and the glue will be in a position that it uh, can set without running into the thread okay a few minutes has elapsed I think the glue is still fairly runny but hopefully not too runny so can I now take this bolt out yes and I think the glue is not running into the thread I hope not but I'll leave it a little bit longer before I take the sticky tape away I think okay I turned it upside down for a minute so that any glue that did ooze did not ooze into the thread it's time to take the uh, tape away I think okay that's looking good and again I'll leave it upside down well of course uh, that failed as soon as I put a screw in there and did it up it ripped the ring apart again so uh, no I never get the strength gluing it that way so I'm gonna to have to abandon fitting a screw of any sort in there what we're gonna to have to do is line this up with where it should be uh, the, the thing is this ring here this ring is static that doesn't go anywhere so if I get this lined up where it needs to be in order for the rear focus to be correctly set I'm going to add a little glue I know this is you know criminal but what can I do add a little glue to the top surface somewhere discreet nowhere near the serial number um, down here somewhere I'm going to put a little bit of glue across the top there uh, I'll make sure that the glue is already partly cured before I apply it so that it doesn't run into here and that way if it sits on the top uh, if I need to just slice it off with a blade later you know I'll be able to do that so it won't be permanent damage of any sort but at least then with this back focused ring set in the correct place uh, the lens will be usable so uh, the the way I'm going to set that I think well I either do it with the original markings that are in there or I set it by hand and hope not to move it and jostle it um, yeah I should be able to do that I should be able to do that let's check then that when that's lined up with the marks that are underneath that it is correctly set for back focus and that being the case I'm going to put a bit of glue over the top here and hold it in place focused in on this door handle using the rear focus then zoom in get the front focus right then zoom out check the rear focus again I know you're supposed to use an alignment chart for this but I don't have one of course right that's perfect so now without adjusting or moving anything else I need to apply a tiny amount of glue between the back locking ring and the serial number plate so a tiny amount of glue there over the top of here between this broken portion 
and the serial number. That's the only thing I can do. Right, I've made up the glue, but at the moment it's way too runny. I've just applied heat gun to it to activate it, makes it uh, set a bit quicker. But I'll leave that to thicken before I apply it, because I don't want this running into any other elements. The glue has started to thicken, so that's not going to run everywhere. So I'll go between the damaged ring there and the adjacent fixed ring which has the serial number. And we'll do one more test before the glue sets forever. It's in focus and staying in focus. Okay, uh, we'll let that glue set and I think that's uh, good enough for now. Okay, I'm off to take some uh, sample shots from this and I'll let you see them. But I should tell you how I'm going to do that. This has a firewire port on it and I can connect that to a PC running. I use an old version of Pinnacle Studio. So when I capture from Sony HDV equipment, uh, the software will drive the camcorder and import it. Now when it's importing DV files, uh, I get a preview window and I can actually see the material as it's importing. But when it's importing HDV, there's no preview window, it's just black. Okay, no problem. It will import, I hope, from this. It will see it as a camera or as a video recorder and it will import as, strangely, three files. A video only, um, M2V, which is an MPEG-2 video only, and two audio files, one for each audio channel, all of exactly the same length. Drop that into the timeline, and they can then write it out as uh, a single MPEG-2 file, uh, which will be a high-definition MPEG-2 HDV 720 file, I believe. That being the case, that is a lossless copy of the original material. However, I generate these uh, YouTube videos using DaVinci Resolve. And DaVinci Resolve doesn't, as far as I'm aware, support any MPEG-2 as, as input. Very unfortunate. Maybe they could update that one day, right? Because they didn't used to import DVAVI files, and now they do. So maybe one day DaVinci Resolve will support MPEG-2 files, even though they're obsolete, uh, which would hopefully give us better quality. But as it is, I'll almost certainly have to transcode to something else, um, MPEG-4 or something. So don't be too harsh on the quality of the material you see from this camcorder, because uh, DaVinci Resolve will somewhat have uh, degraded that quality. Right, so we'll do those shots, and then when I've finished working on this camcorder for a moment, we'll have a play with the standalone video recorder, which was very often sold by JVC as part of a set, really. It was like the video recorder that belonged with this. That video recorder even gets mentioned in the user manual for this camcorder. So it was all part of a, uh, a family. Uh, so let's have a look at that and see if we can get any life out of it. Let's take a look at this video recorder, which is... Um, sort of companion to the uh, that range of camcorders. So this is BR-HD50E. Uh, I do not have the power supply to hand for that, but it may be the same power supply as used on various Sony devices. Uh, so what is it? It's 12 volts center positive. Uh, yes, I can probably find a power supply for that. Not sure what this blank is hiding some sort of option it doesn't have but anyhow I'm told this has a ripped flexi cable inside so let's take a look inside and uh, see if there's any chance of repairing it I may have found it there appears to be a uh, fragment of flexi cable there Presumably the other end is floating around somewhere. So let's see if we can find where that cable went. We'll take the bottom off. That might uh, help us see a little bit more. No, I think we're going to have to take the deck out to try to understand where that cable should go. 
These deck mounting screws are quite loose, so clearly the deck has been out before. Okay, I flipped the whole piece, the whole deck upside down. We've just had to unplug this one connector from the board there, and now we've got the well, better access to this damaged connector here. So we can see, um, well, it's completely ripped off, isn't it? Where it's supposed to plug in here. This is the cable that goes to the head drum. So it's actually the uh, output from the video heads. So super critical. <laughs> and the other end is highly inaccessible because it's buried behind the head, which has the cassette carriage mounted on the top. So to get to the other end, I'd have to um, probably take the cassette carriage off, which could involve a great deal of timing, retiming to uh, put it back together. It looks like an unusually complicated uh, cassette carriage because of course it has to take two sizes of tape so I'm a little bit in disinclined to take the carriage off if I don't have to but would there be any chance of repairing this cable there's not a lot of room in there let's take a closer look at that with a microscope so here's our broken cable and the connector it goes into if I move the cable just out of the way you can see that the connectors are at the this side closest to me what are my options well either I find a way to replace the whole cable source one and fit it well that's not very likely or I strip the plastic away from the top the insulator away from the top edge here and then insert it into the connector there's a small chance that might be possible or uh, which is just as difficult really um, I strip this off and make solder wires to it and then use a replacement bit of flexi cable in the socket and that is surprisingly doable because I have a scrap component here from some old camcorder there's a lens assembly from an old camcorder and the cable on it is the same pitch as our broken one so we could cut a small length of this and perhaps solder wires to this and then bridge them across to the original cable. Um, but soldering onto flexi cable, well, yes, not something I've ever done. And imagine the, the flexi cable would keep just sort of melting away from you. So our first attempt, I think, then is to get a very sharp blade and see if we can take the insulation off the top of here and insert it into the socket. It's got to be worth a try, hasn't it? But I think we'll probably just go through the copper. I think we'll be extremely lucky if we manage to just take the top edge off. You can see here that the, presumably this is ground. We've got signal, 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 and then two connected together, and then signal, signal, signal. So it's eight conductors in all, but the center two are connected together. Right, let's get a sharp blade and see if we can um, do anything with that. It's one of those things where it looks easy when you look down the uh, microscope, but in reality it's much harder. Right, I'm supporting it now on a big screwdriver. So I'm trying to cut along here, hopefully just cutting the top insulation. can sort of feel when I'm getting down towards the copper I think but of course the, it's held on with with glue so it's very hard you can't just pull it off you tell me if you work in this sort of equipment have you ever managed to do what I'm trying to do here I'll try a little bit of uh, isopropyl alcohol to clean up what I've been doing so far I can certainly see access to some of the copper but can I get it all? I'm wondering if this might help dissolve some of the glue. Okay, you tell me, what do you think of that? I think we've got clean copper for all of those tracks. So if it will mechanically sit there, uh, I think it will make good contact. It's got to be worth a try, hasn't it? It's going to be quite difficult to fit to the connector, but we've got to give that a go. 
So the connector of course is facing us uphill and this is pointing outwards it's because the original 90 degree bend will have snapped off. I'm also trying to release the clamp on this connector, pull that up at the same time as we push the cable down. I need to um, change the angle the microscope's at, I think, so that it's looking at it uh, a bit better, which is a bit fiddly, but this microscope will do that. It's possible to see to angle the microscope head and then lower it. Everything here is very awkward. All the angles are awkward, but it looks like the cable is almost seated down. It needs a little bit lower on the right side, which is difficult because of the angle it's been pulled at. Okay, now if I can I push the clamp into place or is it popped back into place already? What's your feeling on that? Do you think we've made contact? Is it worth a try? So um, I don't think that cable is going to work like that. We'll give it a shot because we've got nothing to lose, but I don't think so. Right, I'm using my bench power supply, so it's 12 volts. Uh, current limit will be reasonably high, uh, and it's centre positive uh, on this connector, and this says centre positive. So um, that should be correct. Okay, that connector seems to fit, so hopefully we can power it up and um, at least see if it mechanically runs, and we'll take a tape. So we have an operate LED there, switch it on, and it's drawing, oh it's drawing quite a lot of current, but that seems okay, it was flashing the operate light, why is that? It doesn't look well because I think the deck is in a laced condition. Why is it laced without a tape in there? So I think the flashing operate light is telling us we have a fault. Uh, through the camera it looks like the display's flickering, but it's not. But no, that should unlace. Okay, I'll connect it to monitor in case there's anything on the screen that it's trying to tell us. That feels, you can tell, when you push that that way, the carriage comes forward, but the uh, door is incorrect. It's, let's see if we can take the front off. Right, so that eliminates the door problem. No, this is in the wrong this is in the wrong position, but that's not the biggest problem. The biggest problem is that the machine's laced up. Yeah, so I believe that is the um, loading motor, and turning that should make the deck unload, and it's uh, just spinning. So that's the, there's obviously a, a, it feels like it's a broken gear between that loading motor and the main mechanism underneath. Oh dear, oh dear. Okay, I think this machine may be a dead loss, but um, we'll do some more research on that problem. Putting aside the video record of the time being, it looks a bit dead. Um, the few things I need to complete using this camcorder, uh, well, if I'm going to use it as a camcorder, I want a, a eyepiece cup, a rubber component that goes on here and I've mentioned briefly before I mention it again the old VTRs group really great bunch of people and I mentioned there I was looking for this part and one of the guys there has got one and he's sending it to me if it arrives in time for completing this YouTube video I will show you installing that the other slight problem I've got is this microphone I've borrowed for my digital beta cam uh, and I really kind of need to put that back on digital beta cam so I can demonstrate both cameras uh, later on. So uh, I kind of need another microphone really. Did you order this for Amazon? Ah, wonderful. Let's see what this is. Uh, if this fits and works, I will do a Amazon affiliate link in the comments below. Okay. Uh, certainly looks the right size. It's got uh, an ad adapter ring there for the size of the holder. This, I think, uh, the microphone that's come off the Sony has got a whole heap of sticky tape on it, and I think that's too big for the holder on this camera. So that's ideal. 
Uh, we have some... Uh, oh, it's a mounting... Right, okay, so you can mount that on a, a, a tripod-type base there. Uh, and we even have the windshield, so that's really good. Let's um, put that together on this camera, take this one off, give it back to the Sony. So what's the right size for this? That feels like the right size for this one. So perhaps I can get rid of all the sticky tape off the Sony one and fit this in its place. So I'll actually tidy that one up as well. Oh, this looks absolutely perfect for the job. Quite a tight fit, this, but then you wouldn't want it to blow off. Having got all that nasty gaffer tape off uh, the microphone that was on the Sony, now that we have this handy adapter, uh, we see that actually the microphone on the Sony is a Sony part. Uh, there's the uh, part number if you're interested. So um, that's just the right job, I think, for mounting on here. Interesting on this microphone, it's marked up. And I didn't see an up or down marker on the other one. That looks much better and shows that not everything on old broadcast equipment has to be held together with gaffer tape. I would say that the microphone socket repla uh, placement on the Sony is better than on the uh, JVC. Having it sideways is sticking out a bit. Uh, yeah, it's a bit ungainly that. I can see why they've done it because, I think, because you've got two microphone sockets at the front, so you could potentially have stereo microphones at the front. Um, but I still think it's probably better to have a single socket at the front there. And we have rear sockets on the uh, Sony uh, for further microphones. Here's a nice feature of the JVC. You can set it so that channel 2 microphone input is connected to channel 1. But you can record their set their audio levels separately. So I imagine many people would configure it so that one of the channels is fairly low volume and one of them is higher. And that way, if you uh, get a very loud sound, you can pick it up from the low recording channel, but for most of your sound, you can pick it up from the higher one and get as many bits captured as possible. So that's what I've done here. If you look at the VU meters, you can see that one channel is much higher than the other. And that just seems like a, a sensible way to configure it. So you can have channel one with the audio level set quite low so that it doesn't over over peak and channel two can be a bit more generous because you can use that for quieter background sound right i'm going to um take a few seconds of material with this so you can hear what that microphone sounds like And tell me if you've worked in broadcast or electronic news gathering, which of these two cameras would be your favourite for an outside shoot? Uh, the Betacam is heavier, it's only standard definition, but I guess that's what you'd be asked to use it for. The uh, JVC is much lighter, though the length is similar. Uh, it's high definition, but is it more compressed? Is that necessarily a good thing? You might find that some applications, the much lower compression of DigiBeta is better. If you're running in standard definition mode, you can switch this to DV rather than HDV, uh, but then it's just a glorified you know, domestic DV camcorder with a very nice lens and microphones, but it's compressed to 13 gigabytes per hour, uh, which is fine, but this is true broadcast. So uh, which would be your preference? Would you even call that a broadcast camera? Or would you think that's sort of um, high-end prosumer? I think it's a broadcast camera, but you tell me if you've worked on this sort of thing, where your preferences would be. 
OK, so we have a solution now anyway for playing back 720p recordings using the camera. But of course, that's only the small size tapes. If you had recorded onto the large size tapes using this video recorder, you could finish up with tapes of a format that are very difficult to play back. They would only play, I think, on this one model, making this a format of one model, a very dangerous place to put your recordings. Right, the camcorder is uh, ready to roll also now as a camcorder. The only trouble is I've had an awful job getting hold of the uh, viewfinder eye cup. You just can't find them anywhere. Special delivery. Ooh, I wonder what's in this. Okay, so what do we have? Uh, this was sent to me by uh, a member of the old VTRs group, uh, which I can highly recommend if you're into old video equipment. Aha, this is just what we need. Uh, I gather it's a bit fiddly to install. So we have an adjustment here for how far out the viewfinder sits. I think probably when you're putting it away, you typically push it in all the way. And then when you're using it, it's quite a lot further out. And then you lock it into place. And no, this is not focus. This just sets it so that it's comfortable for you how far back you want the viewfinder to be. We also have an adjustment underneath for placing the um, shoulder pad backwards and forwards. Right, that's working pretty well. I've set that up so it's quite comfortable. However, I am finding that there are some reflections inside the viewfinder when there are bright scenes here. It actually, the viewfinder's own light is reflecting inside here somehow. It's not the world's best viewfinder. Right, what I do need to demonstrate is what happens if we take this uh, HDV recording from a JVC and put it into an HDV deck by Sony. So this uh, Sony deck uh, supports 1080i and 1080p, but uh, what will happen when we try to play the JVC's variant of HDV? Okay, so I press play. And it's not flashing any warning lights. It says 25p there. And looking at the monitor, it seems to be playing it just fine. And you think, good, we want a winner. And we go to capture it in the same way as we would capture other Sony HDV material. And it goes into play. But you notice I know it doesn't do a preview window, right? But it isn't even switching to widescreen. It's sitting in four by three. And the reason is because it failed to capture anything. And it says could not be opened. The reason being that though the software will support 720p, and the machine will play 720p. You say, look, the monitor even tells us, look, it's 720p. It recognizes it, but there's no digital output via Firewire for this format from a Sony. Hence, you need, in order to capture this properly, in order to capture it digitally, you need a JVC player. Maybe you could capture this uh, via an analog connection, uh, YUV or something, but uh, that's not going to be a full quality high definition capture. Anyhow, uh, I will be making some recordings with both this and the digital beta cam we were looking at earlier at an event that's coming up in a few weeks time. And as well as making YouTube video about that, I will also make the raw footage available and maybe some upscaled to 4K footage from both cameras so you can get a feel for how well these two cameras work. Uh, in the meantime, I'll be doing plenty more content on audio and video technology. Bye for now.
later on I found this cable here is not attached properly so uh, that might have a bearing on why the deck wasn't running properly. Okay let's uh, see if we get any more life out of it now that cable's refitted. Oh it's unlaced. Oh that looks a bit happier. It's kind of a little bit happier but still not doing much. Oh it's just about taking the tape down there. Can we get it to play? It's flashing operators. Not well. It's trying to lace or something. Yes it's trying to lace and failing. Well it's slightly less broken than it was I suppose.